Hi there, and uh, welcome to this video about importing data from a, an Excel spreadsheet into a table in Access 2010. Now, I'm going to put this into two videos. This will be hopefully a, a straightforward one where things, well, fingers crossed, go okay. And I'm also hopefully going to produce a second video where we sort of investigate some of the things that can go wrong with this process. So first off, though, I've got a table here for customer that I've set up. I've got my tables over here, and this is the structure of it across here. And I also have my spreadsheet, which is looking like this. And I've got my customer table here. Now you might look at this and go, well, actually, is it in reality, you've only got two records there. Well, yeah, this is just an example, but um, you would assume that you would be given a data set larger than two records this is just for demonstration purposes. Now, uh, depending on the sort of uh, the size of the data, you can imagine if I had a thousand records here, then just entering them, if you like looking at it and actually typing it in myself, isn't really that great an option. And also is likely to introduce some errors into the data. So in terms of efficiency, but also in terms of accuracy, importing the data is always going to be a better solution. So I've got my data here and I need to get it into my table. So first thing I'm going to do is to create a new tab here on my spreadsheet and I'm just going to copy this data and paste it right up in the top here. Okay, and just tidy that up a little bit. Okay, not that that matters too much, but you know, at least we've got that in there. So, I'm now going to look at importing this data. So, I'll go to access here. Okay, first thing I need to do is to close this table because you're not able to import anything into uh, an open table. So, I'm going to close that there. I'm going to go to external data and click on Excel. Now at this point I need to browse for the source of the data. That's where I've got the data, which is in my uh, pizza shop thing here. So I'm going to save that and just go into my documents. So I've got in here and there it is. Okay. So it says import the source data into a new table in the current database. Well, know that I don't want a new table at this point. I want a, a current table I've already set up. So it says append a copy of the records to the table. It says customer. Let's just check that. I'm pretty sure that's what I had here, the customer. Yeah. So I go into my customer table here and I then click OK. Now at this point it's showing me the different worksheets that I've got in my spreadsheet. Okay, and we can see that these aren't really what I'm looking for. So if I go to sheet one, which is the new sheet that I set up there, we can now see the data and we can see it's organized a lot better there. Okay, so I've got my data. That's why we put it into a different sheet. So I've got my data now and I go to next. And it's already realized that my first row, if you like here, is the headings. And it's just got first row column headings. So it's already ticked that for me. So I'm going to click on next. It says import to table customer. Yep, that's fine. And we're going to click on finish. So it says finished importing the file. Okay. And do you want to save these import steps? In this case, uh, I'm going to click on, but I'm not going to save it because I don't need to do it again. And close. And now if I have a look in my customer table, I've got those two records in there. So that's a very simple example of how to do it when everything's set up properly. Just as an idea of what you need to set up properly, um, you need to make sure that your field names match, okay? Um, and you need to make sure that you've got the right data types to accept the data, okay? And that if you've got a primary key in your table, which in this case we do, you need to make sure that you have um, got no duplicates in the primary key value as an example for your uh, in your table in Excel 
So hopefully those are a few tips and pointers for you. In a subsequent video, we'll have a look at how to fix problems as and when they arise if we don't do some of those things in advance.